Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today I wanted to try something a little bit different. I've got this Ryzen 7 5700G over here, an 8 core, 16 threaded CPU with a 4.6 gigahertz max boost and a 3.8 base boost. I have this ASRock B450M motherboard micro ATX with a Ryzen 5 3600 in it. Both can be had for about $60 to $70. So it's definitely budget friendly, but I wanted to see how well the 5700G performs in some of the modern titles, especially recently with FSR 2.1, recently coming out, or 1.2. But I think it'd be interesting to see exactly how well this 5700G performs in AAA titles with that kind of technology supported for AMD products. That'll give us a little bit of a boost in game without sacrificing any graphic fidelity. The 5700G is an eight core 16 thread processor, like I said. So it should be able to handle games like Fortnite, CSGO, of course, and maybe even Cyberpunk at 1080p low settings or 720p medium high. We'll have to mess with the settings and see what kind of numbers that we get. But I think it would definitely be good to see how well it holds up in those titles. And then I think what I'm gonna do is throw in a 750 Ti and see how well they match up next to each other compared to a new iGPU and a six or seven year old GPU that really shouldn't be able to handle too much these days but shockingly i've used the 750 ti and it can still hold up in some of today's triple a titles so let's get this motherboard hooked up update the bios toss in the 5700g and we'll start running some benchmarks so since we're short on some components like power supply memory we're going to take apart the i5 10400F and the 1070Ti and put in the B450 with the Ryzen 5 3600. All right, that's all the screws. Now I just have to take the back of the case off. Now we'll track down where that cable is running to. It's this cable. Gotta love when you do the zip tie tricks. Then you have to go back and cut them off. All right, we've got the zip ties cut for the CPU fan. Layer back down, and we were right. That was the right cable. Now we should be able to pull the motherboard out. I guess that's a good way to keep things together pulled out the IO with it you can start to put it which I do not have the IO killed for that's kind of a bummer but look it even has type C I don't even think this is a newer motherboard and it doesn't support type C definitely in this time period AMD was giving you the best bang for your buck across the board with their budget motherboards that they released we'll start installing this board that little bit of thermal paste being on there isn't really going to make a difference so we'll throw some fresh corsair tm30 thermal paste p size and that should be good enough we have the bracket let's go ahead and set it on there we are now we can take the cooler now that i will wipe down and put it on the cpu and put it up in the motherboard all right, let's install the cooler now. And then work our way over here to the top left, go to the top right. Give it that pressure. Time for the RAM, slot two, slot four. And we'll take this 3200 megahertz memory kit, click it in, and 
Now this configuration should work really, really well for the 5700G. There's eight cores and 16 threads. We're gonna pair perfectly with the 16 gigabyte kit. And the stock cooler will do a perfect job of keeping it fine. So now let's get it back into the case, update the BIOS, and get ready to put the 5700G in. We can go ahead and plug in all the I.O. On the JFP1 header, I'm only plugging in the power connector. I'm not worried about pressing restart or my hard drive light, so that'll be fine for now. All right, as you can see, we're in the BIOS with the Ryzen 5 3600, 16 gigabytes of memory. Let's go ahead and load up those XMP profiles. Once I hook up a mouse, XMP, 3200 megahertz. Okay, so it didn't let us into Windows, so we're gonna have to take our USB device and install Windows on this. I just remember that I'm not using a actual SSD inside of the system, which I have been on my other systems. This one actually has a NVMe, so we need to take that out, get it onto the B450, and we'll be able to load up into Windows. Perfect, we're actually loaded into Windows. Let's check Task Manager and see what we're looking like. So even though this was Windows installed on the 10400F, it actually seems to be working pretty well. We're gonna have to get some Wi-Fi and we might just skip the install. Let's see if the drivers, we've got the NVIDIA control panel. Let's see what the drivers say. There's our 750 Ti, we can probably go ahead and try to run Heaven and see what kind of results that we get with this setup. And then we'll continue on to installing the new BIOS. So as far as the 5700G goes, paired with the 750Ti, the 750Ti showed about double the performance compared to the 5700G. So if you are looking for a very low budget card to pair with a 5700G or 5600G or like a 5500 and you're very, very short on some cash, a 750Ti realistically like a gtx 970 or even a 780 ti if you happen to come across it will give you a significant boost compared to the vega graphics inside the 5700g but paired with the gpu the 5700g is a great 8 core 16 thread processor it can hold up in any title with a pretty much bare bones gpu that you can get second hand I think I paid $60 for the 750Ti and we were able to run Cyberpunk. So I would say that's definitely a plus. Low settings, even some titles, 720p, just to hit that 60 FPS mark will do you just fine. So with that being said, we'll go ahead and show the benchmarks from the two in a comparison. And if you enjoy this kind of content, hit that like button subscribe to the channel we're going to be doing a bunch more pc related videos in the future like water cooling my entire apartment which would be a lot of fun 
So if you like those sorts of things, and smash that follow, and if you've tuned in for this long, I appreciate it, and thank you for being here.